Hi folks, welcome to this video on an introduction to limits. Limits are going to help us find tangent slopes, which is one of the big questions in calculus. Uh, so to begin with, we're going to do something that doesn't look like it has anything to do with tangents, and hopefully that gap will get filled in as we go through uh, the unit, so chapter 2 of Math 611b. So this first question says, what y value does the function approach as x approaches negative 1? So let's get a little closer in here. As x goes towards negative 1, hmm, let me draw this in. As x goes towards negative 1, looks like we're going to a y value of 1. Uh, and if I came at it from the other side, we're also going to a y value of 1. If I trace those with my fingers, the y value I'd be closing in on is 1. And you might say, oh, well, of course, that's what the y value is there. That's what the point is. Um, but if we do it again for 0, so let's see, as x gets closer to 0, it looks like it's closing in on a y value of 3. And that's true from the left and also from the right. You might say, hold on, the graph doesn't exist at x equals 0. But that's not what this question is asking. It's saying, what y value does it approach or get closer and closer to? And the answer to that is 3. It's getting closer and closer to a y value of 3. Now as x goes to 1, well from the left it's going to go up and up and up and up. And from the right, if we go towards x is 1 from the right, that would be traveling left, it's going to go up and up and up and up. Forever and ever. So what value is it approaching? We could say it's approaching infinity, which looks like a lazy 8, an 8 on its side. It's important to understand, though, that infinity isn't a number that you get to. It's a concept, as big as it possibly gets. And then as x goes to 3, this is really sly. As x goes to 3 from the left, it looks like we're heading towards a y value of 0. But if we come at 3 from the right, it looks like it's going to a y value of 1. Oh, no. So it's different numbers from each side. So if someone asks you, well, what is it approaching? I mean, I think it would be pretty fair to say, I don't know. Different values from each side, which is weird. So we're not asking, what is the y value there? Just what's it approaching from each side? These questions of what are we approaching, or what y value are we approaching, are limit expressions, which are typically written like this. Lim, I'm going to write it in script, and I'll have it uh, typeset down below. Lim as x goes to a on f of x, where a is some x value. So this one right here would be saying, what is the limit as x goes to negative 1 on this function f of x? Or in other words, what y value are we approaching as x goes towards negative 1 from each side? And the answer to that is 1. Okay. So it's a more formal way of writing the question that we started with. What y value does the function approach? So that expression, the, lim the expression lim as x goes to a of f of x is read. The limit of f of x as x approaches a. The limit, and this is the big idea here, the limit is the y value that we're approaching. Now, often, the limit is the same as the actual point. So this limit, or limit, or y value we're approaching, y value we approach, often that's the same as this f of a, which means actual y value, or actual point. So let's look at an example here. Consider 2x plus 1. So uh, there's our function. If I were to trace this function, as x goes towards 1, from the left, it looks like I'm going to a y value of 3. From the right, if I approach that x value of 1, right, that's right here, it looks like I'm going to a y value of 3. So there's what the limit is, what we're approaching. It's also worth noting, though, if I put in into this function the number 1, okay, there's the function there, what would I get? I'm going to get 2 times 1 plus 1, or I just get 3. Or you can see on the function that the actual point is at 1, 3. The y value is 3. The real y value and the one we're approaching are the same. The sly thing about limits is that this doesn't need to be the case every time. So here's a weird function called g of x. Uh, and we can write an equation for g of x if we want. Um, 
but we can agree, even without the equation, that it is a function. It passes the vertical line test. So, the limb as x goes to 2 on this. Well, let's go towards 2, a little bit from the left and a little bit from the right. What y value are we closing in on? We're closing in on a y value of 1. But on this function, the actual y value at 2 is 2, okay? Because this is a point 2, 2, sort of suspended in midair. There was that hole in the graph, and apparently it's written like this. Now, if you really wanted to get the equation of this, uh, you'd have to write it as a piecewise function. g of x might be something like this, and it really doesn't matter that much what its equation is. Uh, it's negative x plus 3 for x not equal to 2, and then it takes a value of 2 when x equals 2. I mean, that's a way that you could generate this graph. But what's really important is that the point and the limit don't need to be the same thing. The limit is what we approach, and the actual value is the true y value on the function. Now, sometimes the limit at some value is different depending on which side you approach from. So we saw that in the first example. As x went to 3, we weren't quite sure what happens. It went towards 0 from the left and towards 1 from the right. There's special notation for this. So if you see the limb as x goes to 1 with this minus here, it looks like a power of minus. That means from the left. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left of 1 and travel towards it. Now, if you're coming from the left, that means you're traveling right. What y value am I going towards? I'm going towards a y value of 3. This one over here with the plus, that means from the right. Okay. And if I come towards 1 from the right, so I'd have to get on the function and just trace the function from the right of 1. And that would mean I'm traveling left. What y value am I going towards? 2. If you ask, what is the overall limit? Then that's a difficult question, because it's different from both sides. The overall limit for this, and that's what the limb as x goes to 1 is saying. It's saying the overall, overall limit from both sides is implied as long as it's not an end point to the function, both sides, or to the domain. And the overall limit here, we can channel our Lindsay Lohan and say, it does not exist, okay? It has to be the same from both sides. Now, it's worth mentioning here, what's the actual point on this graph? Well, at 1, the actual point, or y value, is 3, because it's got the closed or filled in dot. Okay, that's what's actually on the function. So that gives us this definition for one-sided and two-sided limits. The overall limit, so this would be overall limit for an interior point, exists if and over it, only if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. They have to be the same. So it looks confusing with all the math speak in there. What it's saying is the overall limit only exists if it's the same from both sides. If I were doing this um, with a graph, I would actually just use my fingers to trace this rather than my pencil. And one easy way to say it is like this. The overall limit exists if and only if our fingers touch. You might say, oh, well, how will I figure out the left and right hand limits? Here's how it works. Use your left hand to do a left hand limit. Use your right hand to do a right hand limit. There's a function that's shown here. I'm going to show it a little better on the next page. So it's not perfect. It's hand drawn. Um, but there's the function we're going to consider. And I'd like you to pause and maybe take a look at these and try and evaluate each of these uh, however many limits, 20 limits here. Okay, you've got a PDF in the video description below. 
can check it out from there and you, here's the function again. So pause, give it a go. And we're back. If you feel comfortable with this stuff, you could skip ahead. I'm going to go through each of these. So the first one is saying, what is the left-hand limit at negative 4? So I have to approach negative 4 from the left. Oh, it looks like it's going to a y value of 2. If I approach negative 4 from the right, ooh, it's also going to 2. And I'd be doing that with my fingers if I were on the iPad. This is saying, what's the overall limit? Well, since they're the same, the overall limit is going to exist. So I'm going to maybe go to a different color here, blue for my overall limits. Um, and then lastly, it's saying, what is the actual point at negative 4? What's the actual y value? Well, at negative 4, you have an actual y value of 2. This is the most boring of all cases. They're all the same, the limits from each side, the overall limit, and the actual point. Let's try another one. As we go to negative 2 from the left, okay, so negative 2 from the left, ah, we're going towards 0. Negative 2 from the right, so I'd just be using my right hand and tracing this. Oh, still going towards 0. The overall limit, are they going to the same thing from either side? Yes, they are. They're both going towards 0. So the overall limit here exists. If you did this with your fingies and they went towards negative 2, trace the graph towards negative 2, or x is negative 2, um, then they would touch. Okay? The limit does not care about the actual point on the graph. And let's see. Uh, so then it says, what is the actual point? Oh man, if when I look at this graph, it's undefined at x equals negative 2. There is no point at all on the graph. So I'll just say that. Typically we say does not exist for a limit and undefined for a point. All right, let's keep going. 0 from the left. Okay, it's going to go up and up and up. Up, oh, we're going towards infinity. 0 from the right. Up and up and up. We're going towards infinity. They're the same from both sides, so the overall limit exists. You might say, well, my fingers would have to go infinitely high to touch, but they're closing in on each other. Now, again, infinity is not a number. Uh, it's just a concept, and some books will call it just no limit if it is infinity because, because infinity is not a number. We like to make the distinction, though, that it's, it's a kind of not exist that means going up forever. And the graph is undefined at x equals 0. Okay, so... That's because there's a vertical asymptote there. As x goes to 1, let's check this out uh, from the left and right. So I'll have to do both sides because it's an overall limit. Ah, we're going towards 0. As x goes to 2 from the left, well, let me just trace this graph. Oh, we're down, down towards negative infinity. As we go to 2 from the right, okay, uh, we're going towards positive infinity. Does the overall limit exist? Heck no. Does not exist because it's not the same from both sides. Let's take a look at the furthest to the right green and red ones here. They're not converging on each other, or the fingies are not going to touch. As we go to 3 from the left, Let's check this out. 3 from the left. Oh, I'd always been really using green from the left, so it's going towards a y value of 2. I bet it was going to ask us 3 from the right, so let's find that there. It's going towards 3. Oh, geez, those are not the same. So the limit from the left is 2. The limit from the right is 3. The overall limit, therefore, does not exist because they're not the same from the left and right, and also because they just don't touch each other or don't close in on each other. And the actual point, let's check it out on the graph. Ooh, where's the closed dot? It's right here. Okay, so the actual y value is 2. The last question we might have for ourselves is, well, how do we get some of these weird-looking functions? 
Um, so most of these functions that I've drawn that have these asymptotes and breaks in them, they're piecewise functions. They have different definitions over different chunks. And here's one that you might end up being interested in, or a type that you might be, end up being interested in. One that has different definitions when x is less than 1, and when x is greater than or equal to 1. So just to start off with, like if I were to graph x plus 1, it looks like this. If I were to graph x minus 2 all squared, that is a parabola. It looks like this. Now, what this is saying is that it's going to be that blue line up until x becomes 1, so right for that chunk. And then it will become the parabola when x is 1. Okay, so it'll become this. So the overall look of the graph might be something like this. I don't know if they really meet up that well, but I know the overall look of this bit. Okay, this is a line, positive slope, slope. And this bit here is a parabola opens up and vertex at 2, 0, because it's just a parabola that's been shifted 2 to the right. We know all about transformation stuff. Um, so rather than make the whole graph for both parts, what I'm going to do is draw a line only up to sort of the split point. And the way to do this nicely is to figure out where that split point's going to be. So on this graph, it will sort of pass off to being parabola at 1. So if I put 1 into this function, what will I get? I'll get 1 plus 1. Well, I'll get 2. Okay. So that's where the pass off is. Let's graph that much. I know that this is a line with a y-intercept of 1. It's got a positive slope. I'm not too fussy about exactly every point. But I know it goes towards the point 1, 2. And because it's got the less than part here, it's not going to be included. Okay, That means it gets an open dot. So there's sort of the first chunk of the graph. It's a line. It's Life is a line until x becomes 1. And then I want to find out where the split point is on this. What happens on this one over here? So the x value where it passes off is 1. Let's see. Let's find the y value. It would be 1 minus 2 all squared, which would be negative 1 squared, or 1. Ooh. So that means it starts being a parabola right here at 1, 1. And because of the equal part here, this is included. Okay, so included means closed dot. Not included means open dot. I also know about this parabola that it has a vertex like this at uh, 2, 0. And so the parabola is going to look like this. And there's that weird function. Okay. Now, I think it's kind of silly to do this in different colors. So I'm actually going to trace over it. It's all one graph. People will think, oh, it's two different functions. No, it's one function. And it has two sort of chunks to it. But it, it doesn't defy the vertical line test. It's still a function. So it says find any interesting limits. So they didn't even really tell us what to do. Uh, I think there are interesting limits, though, around 1. So we could think about the limb as x goes to 1 from the left. I'll just say on f of x. So it's not limb equals. It's limb of. And from the right. And the overall limit, which hopefully at this point you can tell isn't going to exist. And just because it's fun, I'm interested in what the true point is there. Okay. So let's do all these pieces. From the left, oh, we're going towards a y value of 2.
from the right, we're going towards a y value of 1. Overall, there's no limit, or the limit does not exist because it's different from the two sides. And the actual point is 1, 1. That gives us a little intro to being able to sketch these things. I always think about what the basic shape of each part is and then where they pass off. If you're really stuck, you could do more points using a table of values. In terms of practice, we can head to our textbook, the Finney 4th edition, page 67, 43 to 49. I've put some of the even answers here. And I've also got uh, a worksheet from the Stewart uh, 7th edition textbook numbers 1 to 11. So this is all looking at graphical interpretations of limits. It also just gives the odd answers, so here are the even ones. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.